difference what do an engineer and a beaver have in common? <laughs> what? They all build dams that leak. Uh, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> pretty much our job is to quantify the leak, make sure it's within the design constraints of the project, and control it and make sure it doesn't get any worse. I think they knew what they were doing at the time that they designed this dam. The Trinity was still being looked at for navigation. So pretty much they decided that we need something at the as far upstream as we can get where we can store a lot of water because we want to be able to run water through the river to allow for navigation. It's, it's a balancing act between um, all the different benefits that our projects provide. And, and two of the big ones are flood risk management and water supply and they're kind of counterintuitive because for water supply you want to hold more water but for dam safety you don't. Risks are based on two major um, functions. First one being the probability that the dam will not perform as intended which could lead to a breach of the dam. The second part of the equation is the consequences of a breach of the dam would have on downstream impacts. Um, for Louisville, it is um, unique because it has one of the um, highest populated cities directly below it. And um, so that plays a lot into the risks associated with, with the project. The problems we see at Louisville are seepage related and we have some issues down on the spillway that are kind of stability related. Um, they are actually very typical issues that we see on almost all core dams. The reason that keeps it at a high risk is the 400,000 people um, that live off of the, the Trinity floodplain through downtown Dallas um, that gives it a high consequence potential. So you put the two together and that's why it ranks out at um, number eight in the country. When the dam was constructed, right here where this riprap toe is, Inside of the dam, there is a um, what's considered an inspection trench that was cutting off the seepage. And so we tried to cut off the seepage so it would not come underneath the dam. So from anywhere you see this rip, rip up toe, we have that trench and we think that it may be working. And, but it's cut, it stops right here. So any seepage could go around it but once it goes around it, water always wants to flow down and you can see the gradient of the ground goes down. Um, but you can see, like I said, these wet spots right here, those are active seepage where it's coming up out of the ground. Seepage is the initial problem that we deal with. And um, that seepage can cause pressure to build up behind the dam. Um, pretty much we install relief wells to try to relieve that pressure. Because without that pressure, the seepage is just a leak. With that pressure, it has the potential to move material, which is what we're trying to prevent. So pretty much we've installed this line of relief wells and we do get flow out of it like we think we should. Um, the fact that we are still seeing seepage come through it tells us that um, we need more relief wells but the main thing that makes it not a really big issue is the amount of seepage we're seeing. It's very localized. It's not flowing out of the ground. We know that there's not a lot of pressure pushing it. The piezometers that we have out here tell us that the pressure is very minimal. And so that's pretty much why we, we don't consider it a, a big, huge problem. We know that since there's still seepage out here, they're not taking away all the seepage at that line. That's supposed to be like a protective line. We're supposed to catch all the seepage right there and not let it go any further. Apparently it's not doing its job. So I don't like calling them the act of God's storm events. Um, there's, there's been some, um, I think they're calling them the unicorn flood. Is, is, unicorn is, flood? That's, that's kind of the, um, okay. what they're calling them up at um, the risk management center. Okay. It's kind of a play on words a little bit, but um, pretty much that's the way all of our, all core projects are designed is for a very um, infrequent loading event. Typically, it's over one in 100,000 years. Okay. Right now, Louisville Dam, um, for the unicorn storm, of, storm event is what I'll call it, is we believe that we would still have about five feet of freeboard. So we would not have water going over the top of the dam. That is the main thing we're trying to prevent. When we had that tabletop exercise in 2012, we had the city of Dallas there with us, 
and they realized, they looked at the inundation map and they said, okay, our emergency operations center is right here and it's gonna be under 40 foot of water. We're probably not gonna be operating out of there. <laughs> if Louisville or some of our other major dams were to have a breach, that amount of flow would, I mean, completely shut down I-35. I mean, it would make it impassable. If Louisville were to breach, we're talking about a 65 foot wall of water. So it's, it's a much bigger magnitude than it, it would be a very um, devastating scenario. If I had unlimited resources, yes, I would rehab the whole thing. So, but that's yeah. not really even a practical, feasible um, way because that, that would be so many zeros that most um, of the um, people who would have to approve it just wouldn't even look at it because it had so many zeros on it.